Hello, everybody, and welcome to the two-player podcast with Matt Likes Games and Ham Solo. Enjoy the show. Everybody, and welcome to the two player podcast with Matt Licks Games and Hamothy Solo. Enjoy the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the two player podcast with Matt Likes Games and Ham Solo. Enjoy the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Two Player Podcast. We're doing things a little bit different here today. Uh, it's it's the old layout because Streamyard currently is not working the way it should be working. So we're here through OBS. Let me know. By the way, see- can you hear me on on your? <laughs> yes, yes. It says OBS is picking me up. It shows you lighting up and everything. I was just about to say, Loke is in the chat. Let me know, Loke, if anything <laughs> is is screwy right now because Old I will. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta be on it. <laughs> exactly. Like I have to be on top of stuff because I have to fix it as as the problems pop up, and I'm sure they will with OBS. So bear with us here. But it is a brand new episode of the Two Player Podcast. In fact, while I'm doing this intro, let's go ahead and tweet this out so people can get in here. Uh, but before we get into the topics. I mean, let me let me know what you've been up to, what you've been doing, how are you doing? 
Um, I've been cool, just chilling. Um, sleeping way more than usual lately, uh, for whatever reason. But I've been <clears throat> gaming as well. Uh, trying to get my freaking Steam Deck on Windows to get everything all downloaded and stuff. Keeping up on Windows on Steam Deck is not fun. <laughs> like that part isn't fun. Um, but it's nice that it works over there. Um, let's see. Uh, Dragon's Dogma, obviously. Still been playing that. Um, played a little bit of this classic game right here. Nights in the Dreams. Okay. Nice. Uh, made by the Sonic team. Playing some of that. I'm probably going to play that tonight on stream. Um, and... Trying to think if there's anything else. I, I know that there's something else. I just can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, I mean that's the gist of what I've been playing as of lately. I've been chilling out a lot more, and I don't know. I I feel like the rest of this year is going to be so heavy with games. It will be. That I'm just kind of taking advantage of this kind of knowing that I beat Dragon's Dogma and not really forcing myself to do anything right now yes it's gonna, that, it's gonna be hectic yeah i was gonna say because once like stellar blade is, or yeah stellar blade comes out like late this month mm -hmm. and then and then hellblade comes out late next month and then i feel like after hellblade comes out it's going to start getting hectic. Mm -hmm. and um, I, especially once the kind of like late summer to fall. I talked yes. about this yesterday. It's going to get I was really gonna, bad. I was going to say, you guys were talking about yesterday. I want to bring that up because we got the release date for uh, Star Wars Outlaws, August 30th of this year. So, you know, people excited for that. And then Woke mentioned a few days after that is Stalker 2. Stalker 2 is not, I mean, I, from what I know about Stalker, I don't expect that to be a very small game. I expect that to be a pretty big thing. Um, and then what's the game that comes out right before? Um, uh, oh, Black Myth Wukong. Yeah, Black Myth Wukong. And then after Stalker, it's Space Marine too. Right. So just in like... that a, we're going to be sharing, right? Yeah, just in a month period, there's four things there, uh, which is no. which is nuts. And that's just again, that's just one month of this year. We gotta that's figure it. out which ones that we're gonna buy. I'll uh, tell you right now. I'll buy. Um, I'll buy. Uh, fuck, just lost it. Space Marine Two. I'll buy Space Marine Two for sure. All right, I'll probably get Stalker then, and. Let's see. What were the other two games? I know it was Black Myth and something. So else. Black Myth, Star Wars Outlaws, Stalker Two, uh, and then um, Space Marine Two. I will. One of the games I'll get for sure is Space Marine Two. Hundred percent. Okay. I'll I'll definitely get Stalker, and probably um, probably um, Star uh, Star Wars. Then I'll take care of Black Myth Wukong. Uh, Black Myth Wukong and uh, and uh, Space Marine. I don't, for once, for whatever reason, I almost said finals. And Space Marine Two. That's what I'll be getting for for uh, game sharing this year, at least in that in that small window that we're talking about. Yeah, that's clear. just that small window. Exactly. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we didn't even bring up. Well, I mean, luckily those are coming to Game Pass, but we didn't even bring yeah. up like about or Indiana Jones. Yep. Uh, and other games, plenty of other games. The new Call of Duty, which I I must think it's safe to assume it's not coming to Game Pass, the newest one this year. So I don't know. Probably gonna probably gonna grab that as well. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a it is a big year. It's a very big year, very expensive year. Uh, but let's get into some actual uh, expensive year actual, means usually a good year. Well, very much so. Very much so. I almost said let's get into some topics, but before we do that, I mean, I, I might as well let you guys know what I've been playing. Uh, Dragon's Dogma 2, but I've taken a little bit of a break from that to play 
Portal. I never played Portal before. My friend Shiv, uh, Mr. Shivery on Twitter, talks about it all the time. It's probably his favorite game of all time, besides uh, Jedi Fallen Order. And I told him I never played it. He said I have to play it. I told him I play it this weekend or this past weekend. And I beat Portal 1. It's a fantastic game. Um, Sava. I'm about to beat Portal 2. Uh, Luke, what are you talking about, buddy? Uh, I'm so confused. Luke, Luke, you threw me off, buddy. I'm about to beat Portal 2, and then I'm going to hop right back into Dragon's Dogma. But that's really what I've been up to. NBA, that's not nothing new. Um, I played a little, a couple matches of older Call of Duties. Uh, Call of Duty 4, specifically. I played a couple matches of that. The other day, had a pretty good time. But now, we can get into some topics. And first up, let's get this one out of the way. I mean, I'm excited for it, but it's not gaming related. Uh, Fallout, the TV show, comes out tonight, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific time uh, for anybody on the West Coast. But it's getting great reviews. As of right now, in fact, let me refresh this and see if it's updated at all. Still the same. As of right now, on Rotten Tomatoes, it's sitting at a 91% with 46 reviews. Uh, French for, I don't, I, I, do I look like I speak French, Luke? Be honest with me, buddy. I don't speak French. I don't speak, I, I don't speak, I barely speak English, Luke. Barely. Uh, so bear with me on that. But Fallout getting pretty great reviews. I know I'm excited to watch it. Are you watching it tonight when it, when it drops? Um, most likely I'll watch it, like, at the the end end of the night yeah probably like um i don't know i might like try to play basketball or whatnot with you and then watch it and then probably get off a little early and watch it or something like that i don't know it just kind of depends on what you're trying to do and what everybody else is trying to do i'm a i'm gonna get in probably two episodes of this tonight um you sure there's gonna be multiple episodes it's not gonna yes, be a weekly full, thing like full like season Halo? drops full season drops tonight oh really yes full season uh yeah which, so thank I'm, god for that i'm probably gonna i, I i'm like, i don't know it just kind of depends on what you what, what you're trying to do bro i'll be i'll be down to play basketball but like i mean once i get off instead of playing Instead of playing shit, I'll be watching Fallout. Probably watch two episodes of that. But I'll be down to play basketball. Same as usual, pretty much. About to say, because it'd probably be about... Like... Play a game of basketball at, like... I don't know. Like 11... Your time. Between 11 and midnight your time. And then just Mm -hmm. after that, like, one game hop on... I'll probably go to bed. Yeah. I get that. And, I'm and, that. and watch a couple episodes of that. I cannot wait to see this shit. It's getting, it, like I said, it, like I mentioned, it's getting really great reviews right now. 91% on Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes is probably, like, if I want to see, if I want to know anything about what a movie's doing, I usually go to Rotten Tomatoes. Usually for the audience score, but as as we know, there's no audience score because the shit's not out yet, but it's it looks like people are very much enjoying it, at least among the reviewers. Even IGN Loke uh had some had some nice things to say about it, I saw, which yeah, is sure. which is surprising to see uh, surprising to see IGN not suck for once. Um so hats off to them. Hats off to them for that. But getting into some more uh gaming oriented topics. There was one that we talked about very, very briefly right before the show started. Uh, you asked me if I saw it, and I did see it, and I do have some thoughts on it. Uh, IGN is not the best, Loke. They're not the best. IGN's a cesspool. It's a cesspool of, of just bad things. No, I'm kidding. But it isn't great. Uh, but we were talking before the show about EA Motive. Uh, basically... Basically being hard at work on Dead Space 2 Remake and then having to pull the plug on that due to a lack of sales on the original Dead Space Remake. And I'll tell you what, that's not because of me. That's I, I did my part on that. 
I, I bought it twice. But apparently they weren't happy with sales. Dead Space 2 Remake, according to Jeff Grubb, uh, is is dead. That's not going to happen. Instead, EA Motive yeah, will be joined. How went, too, though. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's another thing. EA Motive is going to be working on Battlefield now. They're just a they're just another Battlefield studio, uh, apparently. Which, like I said, I've got thoughts on this, but I want to toss it off to you first. I mean, I I know I don't think you beat the Dead Space remake. I know you played it, and I know you had some good things to say about it. Mm-hmm. What are what are your thoughts on well Dead Space Two remake being a dead in the water? But not only that, but EA Motive joining, basically being a Battlefield studio now. Uh, yeah. So those are two totally separate thoughts right there. Um, so as for um, as for them, be let's go. I, I'll, let me talk about the game first. The game yeah. was the only reason I didn't beat the game was because I beat the first game. First like, one. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I beat the original Dead Space not long before the remake came out. Yeah. Like, remember, I beat it like three months or four months before the remake came out. Yep. And, uh, yeah. So I was just like, why? Why, why? why do I need to play this? But I still I still bought the game. I still ended up buying the game when I went on sale. Um, but, yeah, the game was gorgeous. And it got really high reviews. So it's really weird. Mm-hmm. To see that it didn't sell very well, you know? I mean, I guess it's kind of like, I don't know. I'm thinking of, like, maybe Final Fantasy. Like, maybe it's just not, like, as popular right now as people want it to be. Even though it's, like, still, like, maybe good. Mm-hmm. And, like, people that like that game praise the death out of it. Or praise the, praise the living hell out of it, you know, right? But maybe yeah. it just doesn't quite hit. And then hearing that it's, you know, a remake, maybe, you know, I mean, maybe remakes are starting to get old for some people. Maybe I, people I are tired of hearing. Maybe people are tired of hearing the word remake because it's just like you buy the new you you buy the new systems not to play the same games you played before. And I understand um, Dead Space is. It's been a long time since the original Dead Space came out. Definitely, but but in a but in a but in a time where everything's kind of getting remade, it's just kind of like another one. You, know, you got Resident Evil that's been remade. You got uh, you got you know both of the Last of Us has been remade. You know, um, I mean it's just like a trend right now and. You know, I, I I just feel like people are more or less looking for something new and exciting. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel like more popular than ever now is like multiplayer games. Oh, yeah. And if you don't really have a whole lot that you can do after a game is done being played, then it's kind of hard to... And it's kind of hard to keep people around or keep people interested or make people want to buy it six months from now or a year from now and have it still be at a decent price without it being at a crazy sale. Because it almost feels like unless you're like, unless you're like that game as a single player, you're having a hard time. Yeah. Like, because like, look at a Morals of Avium. Um, look at, uh, I mean, even a, e- e- even a co-op game, like, like Atlas Fallen, that thing, you know, it was all right. Uh, Jedi Survivor, you know, got some love, but you know, like, what do you do after you beat that game? And I feel like a lot, Fair I point. think, I feel like what a lot of games need to try to start doing again is making their game smaller in story, but have like something to do multiplayer wise. 
Yeah, I'll be done with that. I think the other option of that would be to, and it's never gonna happen. So it's just me yeah, talking into the wind. It's just me talking into the wind. Is is they priced the game like Dead Space to Dead Space remake was phenomenal. I had no issue paying seventy dollars for that game twice. Had no issue with it. However, that game being what it is, fifty dollars. It's it's a remake of a game we played before. You added some new elements, some very cool elements, but like you say, after the game's over, the game's over, is done. I mean, unless you really love it that much to go back through it again on a new game plus, which is cool and everything, but most people aren't doing that, really, and that's not getting you sales either. So, I mean, that would be the other that would be the argu- other uh, counterpoint to that. Uh, if they're not willing to do multiplayer stuff. Which I do believe Dead Space, you could do something really sick with multiplayer with a Dead Space game. And I don't mean Dead Space 3. Fuck that. Forget that. I'm talking like Team Deathmatch, like actual online game modes with that, with like uh, the Dead Space world would be phenomenal. Um, but. As of, as for myself, just, I mean, you spoke on the whole Dead Space thing, and that's what I'm going to speak on really quick. Um, I'm, I'm really bummed about that. I'm really, really bummed about that, because it, it only made sense to me that you did the first one. The second one is probably the best one, uh, probably the most loved Dead Space, and you're not going to do that one. And it also really bugs me that that means, well, we're definitely not getting Dead Space 3 remake. And out of all three games, that one needs a remake the most. So we'll never get that. And, and uh, well, my next point kind of ties in with with, uh, the whole EA motive now being a Battlefield thing, which I'll save that. But I'm going to let you go in on that first. What are your thoughts on them now being relegated to battlefield going forward into the future um i mean obviously that stinks <laughs> yeah i don't uh, i mean i don't really know i mean that's just like you know some you know that's just that's no different than toys for bob mm-hmm. going to like activision and or i mean you know they were under activision already but like going into like call like just making Call of Duty games. That's yeah. what the equivalency of it is. Raven. So it's just like, I mean, that doesn't sound exciting. It just sounds like they're just kind of a support studio now, and they're there just to help on projects, but never be like, or I mean, I shouldn't say never. I should definitely never say never. But um, as of what it looks like right now. It looks like they're gonna be just relegated to doing what a lot of other folks are already doing there, which will be good for Battlefield. It'll be great for Battlefield. Sure. But it's just like in the sense of playing fresh new games or getting a fresh interpretation of a game, uh, like like the remake for Dead Space, how it like they managed to like put the whole game together compared to what it was previously where it was like more segmented. Mm -hmm. So like, I mean, that's a pretty, that's pretty creative to try to do and bring to a game that really is very linear. Right. Yes, absolutely. So, um, so like to see, to, to hear something like that is being taken uh, that 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 type of that type of innovation is being put into now just battlefield. It's a little disheartening, not exciting, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. I I definitely agree with that. Now, my my whole stance on this is, I think it's silly that they. I know I know they said that they're not doing Dead Space Two, or the, it's reported. By Jeff Grubb. They're not doing Dead Space 2 because of the sales. And sure, I get that. Fine. But for a lot of the fans of Dead Space, 
you successfully revived an IP that had that had essentially been dead since when was Dead Space 3 2013 or something like that. You revived a dead IP successfully in a lot of people's eyes. You're now going to abandon that revival and you're going to put the team who made it, the, the team who innovated and created something new on a dead IP. Because, I mean, there's there's the original framework is there, but like Ham said, there's a lot of new shit in that game. You're going to put that team on another dead IP that you killed when you didn't listen to the fans and and what they wanted. You, the fans told you, hey, we want, a, we want a traditional Battlefield game with a campaign and a story and everything and, and a really big multiplayer. Like, you know, we got in every single Battlefield ever. And instead, you said, what we're going to do is we're going to change all the operators online. We're basically going to make Battlefield 2042 a, a, a really bad hero shooter is what we're going to do. And then when people didn't like it, you kind of pivoted off of that. And now you're taking teams to f- come over and fix the problem that you that you created, that you did <laughs> that you didn't need to create. And now the teams aren't working on other shit. Now they're only working on Battlefield. Why? It, it, like, like Battlefield being in the state that. that it's in. Yeah, Battlefield being in the state that it's in isn't EA Motive's fault. Why are they working on that shit? Like they 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 did their thing. They they released a game, a high scoring game, a high reviewed game, and they're being punished now. They got to work on Battlefield. Uh, dude, like, I, I mean, and here's the thing: we we compared it to uh, Toys for Bob with Call of Duty and everything. But like, dude, Battlefield at this point is not Call of Duty. They are so not Call of Duty at this point. There was a time, once upon a time. Where they were, they were, they were kind of competing. They were doing their thing, but with EA, the last I don't know decade. I mean, since Battlefield One, probably not a decade, but since Battlefield One, ever since that, they've been trying, like actively trying to kill the Battlefield franchise. And now it's just weird to see them taking teams and putting them on Battlefield in a desperate attempt to save it. It's it's confusing to me. I don't know why you did all the stuff you did for the last six or seven years just to be doing this stuff now. That's that's how I feel. Ty talks. Appreciate you for stopping by, Stanley Francois. I don't think I mentioned you, but I appreciate you for stopping by, buddy. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I'm not. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. I'm not happy. I'm not thrilled about this. This is not the coolest thing that I've seen. This is one of the worst things I've seen. Um, and it's. It's upsetting. It's upsetting, uh, and that's really all you can say about it. And I and I hope, um, I hope whatever they do with Battlefield, I hope they actually have, you know, some full creative input because I think EA Motive is a really talented studio. Uh, Atai talks. We're talking about, um, we're talking about uh, EA Motive being pulled off of pretty much whatever they're working on and now being relegated to being a uh, battlefield that's studio. pissed yeah i'm not i'm not thrilled about this <laughs> that's uh, what we're talking about Matt. yes pissed. yeah i they 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 released dead space remake fucking incredible bet like they they took a game remade it and made it better than the original which is what if you're gonna do a remake that's what you should strive to be to do they did it and now their their reward for that is hey, fuck you guys. You're not doing any. You're not doing that anymore. That's their reward. Is too bad. You're working on Battlefield now. Although I do believe Dead Space Two getting canceled is whatever. I mean, I I hate it, but I do believe they're also working on Iron Man. Are they not? I believe it's EA Motive. I'm gonna double check that. I believe it's EA Motive working on Iron Man. EA Motive Iron Man. Marvel Entertainment and EA, and EA Motive Studio team up for an all new Iron Man video game. So and who's doing the who's doing the Black Panther game? The Black Panther game. That's from EA too, isn't it? Black right. Panther video game. Game developer. Is Cliffhanger Games doing the Black okay. Panther game? 
Uh, so, I mean, fingers crossed. Well, it still looks like Motive's doing a little something. I mean... That's... Yeah, that's good. I, I just... Dead Space... I, I'm just bummed, personally. That's so it's just an ugly direction, right? It's it, it's yes. not it's not a good thing to. It doesn't motivate you when you hear that part of team is now responsible for something that they're they that they, they themselves didn't really seem to want to do. Yeah, and that, and that's one of the things that bums me out the most about it, is just. I mean, as much as. As good as Dead Space Remake is, you can tell they really cared about the project and were really excited about it. And they were probably just as equally excited to work on a Dead Space 2 remake, and now that's never going to happen. Um, Epic Gamer in the chat. I wonder who that is. I wonder who Epic Gamer is in the chat. Um, he says, Starship Troopers just got an 8 gigabyte update, new content, performance fixes, etc. Um, Mike, I'm definitely down to play that. Uh some point some point tonight's a little weird because probably probably busy fallout comes out tonight but i do want to play starship troopers at some point ty talk says i looked at their back catalog all they got is dead space remake remaking is easier than making it i'm sorry remaking is easier than making a while uh, a whole new product it's like hopping on a popular on a popular beat but making a new hit track very different i get what you're saying I get what you're saying. Um, I, I just think looking at Dead Space Remake, like, you could say it was an easy task remaking a game that was already great. I don't think it's an easy task to not only remake it, but make it better. Take it from great to amazing is is not an easy thing. Um, and, and there's very few remakes that do that. Um, very few. Um, and they nailed it and it just kind of sucks that this is their reward for it but that was just one topic i mean and do you got anything to say on that anything else to add to that before we move on to to some other other stuff here oh uh, no nah. gotcha I'm gotcha set. um so the next thing up is and we mentioned it a little a little bit uh earlier briefly uh star wars outlaws official release date august 30th 2024 i mean i think it goes without saying we're both kind of, we're both kind of excited for this game right um what what game star wars outlaws oh hell yeah yeah so i i think oh, that yeah. goes without saying sorry I'm, i mean uh sorry I'm, I'm just gonna go on ahead and say it i'm sitting here trying to get my stuff ready for tonight since you know Streamyard decided to screw everything up <laughs> so sure like, that's what i'm kind of doing but yeah um but yeah let me talk real quick about that. Uh, that game looks insanely wild. Like, for a Ubisoft game, like, if they do it right and make it somewhat more linear than they did with a thing like Avatar, where it was, like, nice that it was free and open and everything, but, you know, it just seemed like if you want a fast track or if you kind of are, like, you know, you're kind of just done. You know, you, you know, you did a few side things, and you're just like, ah, I just want to do the rest of the story. I'm good. It's like not that easy in no. Avatar to just like comfortably just go from A to B. Like, you know how when you play like a Gears of War or something like that, it's like pretty obvious what you do next. Mm -hmm. You do this next, do that next. It leads you and like. And it'll like lead you to the end of the game if that's what you want to do. But if you want to take more time and be more, you know, you know, slow with it, look around, do stuff and whatnot, you can do that. I, I didn't feel like an avatar did that very well. So um Yeah. I'm hoping in Star Wars that it, they, they do have kind of a beeline feature or beeline kind of direction that you can go if you are thinking, you know. I don't want to do every single thing around here. I just want to play the story. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Like, that's one thing. That's probably the biggest thing Ubisoft games get criticized for. Like, s starting, like, last gen, even before last gen, they they make stupid, huge worlds. Like, like some and sometimes when the game is really good, that's great, and you get lost in it and everything, and it's fun. 
Like, I spent an entire summer playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and I didn't complain about it once. That game was amazing. Sure. But then, something like Avatar, and it's no diss on Avatar. Avatar's got a good story. The story's there. The game looks amazing. It's one of the best-looking games probably this generation. But it's it's just kind of... It's difficult to play when it's so damn big. I felt the same about Valhalla. That game, like, I see people saying, oh, I beat that game in, like, 150 hours. I'm like, dude, I'm not playing a game like Assassin's Creed Valhalla for 150 hours. Like, Avatar for 150 hours. That shit, I just can't. I can't do that. Uh, But with this, I mean, from what I understand, I believe they talked about it, that this is going to be one of... Or not one of, but this is going to be a more linear experience uh, in terms of Ubisoft style games. Uh, I do believe they've they've talked about that, haven't they? In fact, I'm gonna look for it. Honestly, keep talking while I bring that up. Um, who's working on that? Ubisoft, yeah. Ubisoft, Star Wars Outlaws, linear. I'm just typing linear, even though it's not. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You know that thing is not gonna be linear, dude. Nope. Uh, f- they're, they're like restraining themselves, probably. Yes, and I I can't find the article, but there was definitely somebody, a developer <laughs> Don't talking. Overdo it. Uh, right. Don't make a. F- I have like five more missions I could add to this part. <laughs> fighting, fighting the urge to make a five hundred hour Star Wars game. They're just they're just fighting Bro, but off like, the urge. What's wild is like game uh like a like an avatar in Star Wars, it's okay to do that, but like I feel like you gotta kinda gradually get people into that. Like I feel like if maybe you started out with the Assassin's Creed franchise the way that they're doing Assassin's Creed now, it might not have it might not have took off. Yeah. Yeah, it's but a like, lot to like, ask like, I feel people. like they gradually moved to like bigger, more expansive, bigger and more expansive. But then people are like, all right, settle down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 100 percent And like I it's just a lot to ask of people to dedicate that amount of time to something. Even if they love it. It's it's a it's a hard sell for a lot of people. Lady Foxfire, appreciate you for stopping by. Uh but I mean, yeah, like we're we're excited for the game August thirtieth. I, I hope, uh, I hope it, I hope it's as good as it looks because it looks like it's going to be pretty awesome. It looks like it's really going to be pre- pretty awesome. Uh, Lay Fox says, "Hope you, bo- hope you're both doing well." I'm doing pretty damn good. I'm doing pretty I'm damn just good. Fine right now. I'm, I'm doing all right. Uh, absolutely, but. Oh, you know, you know, what we should talk about. In fact, I'm going to ask you this about Star Wars. And it's going to lead into the next topic. And I'm sure you can figure out what it is once I ask you this question. Do you think Star Wars is going to be 60 FPS or 30 FPS? 60 FPS or 30 FPS? I think Star Wars is going to be 60. You think it's going to be 60? Damn, that would yeah, be pretty awesome. And, and, and I mean, I just look at the, the style of the game, you know. Um, I feel like personally... Um, a game like Dragon's Dogma Two looks more looks more like realistic and stuff like that than something like this Star Wars game. Like I think the Star Wars game looks good, but I just think that it's just a different level. Yeah, it's just like a little, little different level of realism. Like if you look at some of like the NPCs, like like even in Dragon's Dogma, sometimes if you look at some of the NPCs, it's like, oh my goodness. But but like if you really look at them in in um in a like um goddamn what am I thinking of in us uh, in Star Wars, it it kind of looks just under the quality of like a Jedi survivor. Yeah, but still, like on that same level, right? Just like, just like a hair, it's like a little hair, like um, not something that needs to be 
freaked out about, but I think it's at a low enough level of fidelity that it will be able to run at 60. Like, I don't think they're taking advantage of, like, like the whole nanite and all that. <laughs> like, I just don't think so. Sure. Sure, yeah. I, I, I mean, I would like it to be at 60, obviously, because who wouldn't? Um, but I, I think that's going to be a game that's 30. You think it's going to be 30? I think it will be. That's I interesting. It okay. I would like it to be 60, and, and obviously I hope I'm wrong, but I, I think... I just think we're at the point in this generation where it's like sometimes games are 30, and that's just that's just what it is. I think I think the games have caught up to the hardware, um, especially since we're not fully taking advantage of the hardware. Um, shout out to uh, um, Ascendant Studios for their latest update, or it hasn't come out yet, but. They gave an update on a future update for Mortals of Avium. Uh, it's going to support FSR 3 and frame generation on consoles. Shout out to them for fully taking advantage of console hardware. But until until developers actually are fully taking advantage, I think we've hit a point where it's like, sometimes these games are just going to be 30 FPS. Um, yeah. but, we'll, but we'll see. I hope I'm wrong. Uh, but it does lead me into Hellboy 2 uh, because... It was a big talking point late last week that Hellblade 2 was going to be 30 FPS. And I'll tell you what, when I, I I'll give you my thoughts on this. When I saw this, I oh, was like, won't. yeah, I'll tell you what, Bobby. Um, when I saw this, I thought, oh, okay, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Like, I was a little bit disappointed in the sense, like, I expected there to be at least an option for 60, but... It also kind of doesn't surprise me that there's not. Given the fact that the game, this enti- the entire marketing cycle for the game, or like 90% of it, has been, hey, this game is going to be like the best looking game you've ever seen. And that's been most of the marketing cycle for this game. Sure. So with that said, when they tell me, hey, it's only 30 FPS, I'm, I'm thinking, well, you can probably do 60 but if you do 60, then is it going to be, hey, it's the best looking game you've ever seen? Probably not. So they pro- I think they probably just compromised and said, you know what? Sorry, we're not even going to give you the option. We're not even going to give you the option because we want you to be playing the best looking game you've ever seen. Um, and that the cost for that is 30 FPS. Now, a lot of people online will tell you that you... like give you the impression you're not allowed to be excited for this anymore. Um, sure. Which is which is nuts to me. So I, I want to pass it off to you. What do you think? I mean, I I think we're both excited for Hellblade 2, but but oh, were, no. you, were you surprised to see the 30 FPS only, no 60 FPS option, and, and what are your thoughts on, on that news? I was a little surprised to see that, but, you know, at the same time, I'm not a developer. You know, mm-hmm. so, I mean, I can only go based off of what they tell me is best for them. And plus, I know that something like that gets figured out early on in development. And that's like directly a developer decision, like the develop the main developers of the game, like the, the people that are making, you know, the the foundation of that game that's them that figure that shit out right and yeah. and if they're going for the highest fidelity and everything then something's got to take a hit you know um like david jaffe said you got to rob peter to pay paul in some in some aspects and i mean hey I want a 60 FPS game as much as the next guy. I think it'd be crazy to sit here and say, I'd rather play at a lower frame rate. Right? Yeah. I think that's crazy to say. Yeah. But if you can give me the level of fidelity that's like supposed to be the best that you ever seen, but also have it be as smooth as like a star field outside the city. Sure, yes. <laughs> outside yeah. the city. Then I'm 
perfectly fine with that. Like, if the frame timing is great, I'm fine with it. Like, Dragon's Dogma, I've heard nobody complaining about that game being in 30 FPS. Mm-hmm. I, I, I haven't seen that trending, nope. you know, since it was, like, announced that it was going to be 30 FPS. Yeah. It, yeah, I haven't it, seen that going on at all. Let's see a, a, another big deal. I mean, obviously, Starfield made the cut. It, I feel like it did really well. But let's talk about something like, you know, a GTA, probably, right? Fuck it. Oh. Let's go back to last generation and just talk about Red Dead Redemption 2. That game's still 30 FPS. Yeah. Unfortunately, the game's still 30 FPS, but it's the wild. frame timing in that game is so good. Doesn't matter. That it just doesn't even bother you. Yeah. It, so that's what I'm really so... thinking about when it comes to Hellblade 2. It just, like, just please, like, if you guys are so proud of it and you're, you know, just, just, just don't fuck it up. Just don't fuck up the, just don't fuck up the, the, the rollout. Yes. That's all I got to say is, like, if this is what you chose to do, then I hope you did it right. Don't say this is what I chose to do, and then it's kind of janky. And I and I honestly don't think it's going to be. Anybody and everybody that I've seen that's played this game, even the ones that are a little like weird about it, can't help but to say it's just gorgeous, and it's great. And I haven't heard anybody say, man, this stinks at 30. Like, I haven't seen any reviews say that. I'm sure yeah. there's going to be those people that say that after the game comes out and yada sure. yada, but um, but as for people that were just trying to focus on playing the game and how is this experience, it seems like it's going to be like some some sort of sorcery. Like I'm excited for it. Definitely, definitely, I, and I'm right there with you. And Ty talks asked a question, which I thought was pretty uh pretty. Hey, what up, Ty? He says, Good "Do you him. think?" Do you think execs were a little bit disconnected in talking about frame rates early on? Earlier oh, 100%. On in the gen? No, Seems no, no, no. If... No, dude, let, let, I'm, I'm sorry. I got to interrupt Go you. It. Go for it. Bro, this all ties back to the exact same root of Microsoft's issue, and it's messaging. Mm-hmm. Messaging, messaging, messaging. That is Microsoft's issue. There's nothing wrong with the 30 FPS. There's absolutely nothing wrong. But when you come out and you say, hey, our standard now is 60 and a third of uh, a third of your games are coming out at 30. That's just like you. And, and then you want to stand on something saying, well, we did do that. When you have to give me an excuse, that means you gave me a bad message the first time. Yes. You left some open to interpretation areas and that's really not cool. Like it's, it's really, for a company as wealthy as Microsoft, you should not be leading anybody on. No. It, and it's especially a, like we talk about a company as wealthy as Microsoft, a company that seemingly, I mean, well, not so much Microsoft, a company, that, a company that's seemingly as open as Xbox, like the brand Xbox, like how, how, uh, engaged with the community you know phil spencer likes to be how engaged aaron greenberg likes to be even sarah bond on twitter how engaged they like to be on twitter you would think that stuff like this like with the transparency they like to offer stuff like this wouldn't be an issue the messaging yeah, should the cracks yeah the messaging shouldn't be the issue when you're when you're as transparent as they are and for some reason it is and and that's something i I mean, to this day, it's been that way since the since like the beginning of the Xbox One generation, even the end of the 360 generation. But for whatever reason, during the 360 generation, they were on top of shit. Like they like they knew how to they the marketing. People complain about marketing nowadays. Their marketing was great. Their messaging was great. Like most things they did was great. And then they kind of, they screwed it up a little bit with the Xbox One generation, and we're still kind of dealing with that stuff. We're still kind of dealing with that same mentality. And, and as a fan, it's, it's just like, you guys, 
I'm not even mad at the things that it's that it, that that's happening. It's the fact that you say this thing and then the other thing happens. And it's like just tell just be straight up and say, "Yeah, like the smart thing to say, to say would have been like some yeah, some games are going to be 30 FPS." Now I get why they didn't because it's like that's not a selling point. Like, as realistic and as truthful and as honest as that is, like, whenever you hear, yeah, sometimes there's going to be games at 30 FPS this generation, you probably a lot, a good amount of people who, who are expecting this big next-gen leap are going to be like, well, then why would I, I already have 30 FPS on the thing I have now. But, like, it, it, it's, it makes you look better in a situation like this or makes you not look bad in a situation like this because you were honest, you were up front, you said what it was, and that's the way it is. And you got it out of the way. But I don't know. Ty Talk says it's, it all stems back to Phil. He talked about VR. He talked about um, only some games going to PC. He said he literally said Control was coming to Game Pass and it came on PS Plus instead. I don't even no, remember that. Control did come to Game Pass. It did. Yes, Control's on Game Pass. Came the game. This is the second time it's on Game Pass, actually. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure it was on Game Pass before the new gen. Was it before the new gen? No, it was the the um the consoles launched and then the old version came to uh to Game Pass and now on the on Game Pass is the new like updated version. That's the next version. Consoles. Yeah, for the new consoles and everything. Um. But yeah, like I, I get the whole VR, the whole VR point and everything. He did talk about VR. Um, I'm not sure about the whole games going to PC thing because I wasn't paying attention back then. But I'm gonna assume you're right that he was saying only some games will go to PC. Um, we know that's not the case now. Uh, we can obviously see it's it's everything's going to PC. Uh, but I mean, I, it's 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 like we're saying. I I just think it's messaging. And it's and it's all stuff that can be avoided. It's not like the end of the world kind of stuff, but it just makes you look silly. Makes you look silly when you don't need to look silly. Um, but as for this Absolutely. this game, as for this game specifically, thirty fps. Li listen, thirty fps in a game like Hellblade doesn't bother me. I've I'm fine with it. Now, if it was like fast paced, if, if Hi Fi Rush was only thirty fps, that would be an issue. But it's not a fast-paced action game where where timing matters and everything. It's just it's just Hellblade, and I'm totally fine with the 30 FPS. But let's see what we got here. I do believe we had uh, another thing here to talk about. Oh man, I I blanked on what that last thing was. But actually, we can talk about um Blizzard Blizzard games uh going back to China and an agreement that was reached between Blizzard Entertainment and NetEase uh, to bring back games to China. I believe this was uh, back in 2022 because um, it was soon it was either soon before or soon after the deal was announced that they were going to be in the process of acquiring Activision that the games left China. Um, and now they're back and also, somebody pointed out, and I'm going to find who it was so I can actually give them credit for it. Um, I know I follow him on Twitter. Oh, Crusader. Um, at Crusader3456 pointed out, uh, this is simply great news for both Microsoft Gaming and players alike. He says, Chinese players aren't left out. Xbox players become a priority for NetEase. Microsoft makes a ton of money. It's hilarious how Microsoft leveraged a screw up from the previous regime to their favor, and they did. They they took they took something that, I mean, old ABK completely screwed up, and they made it benefit them, because in this agreement, I don't know if you saw it, but in this agreement, uh, they also reached an agreement, um, a verbal agreement, uh, to bring. Uh, to bring NetEase games to Xbox. That's so nice. so not only are they are they getting the games the Blizzard games back over in China where like a lot of people really love those games, but 
Xbox, Microsoft is also getting something from it, which is just it's it's pretty like like Crusader said, it's pretty hilarious to see them turn a screw up into something that's just obviously beneficial for both parties. Uh but yeah, did you did you see this news? I mean, I don't outside of Diablo, I mean I've loved Diablo, but like World of Warcraft, Starcraft, I never played Starcraft, so I'm not even gonna pretend like I know shit about that. But um I, I think we can all agree this is this is good news, right? That that more players will have access to this to these catalogs of games. No um, doubt. For sure. But have I mean, let me bring up the article here and see if there's like any real point here. Uh it says after continuing discussions over the past year, both Blizzard Entertainment and NetEase are thrilled to align on a path forward to once again support players in mainland China and are proud to reaffirm their commitment to delivering exceptional gaming experiences. The renewed publishing agreement will encompass games Chinese players had access to under the previous agreement, World of Warcraft, Hearthstone, and other titles in the Warcraft, Overwatch, Diablo, and Starcraft universes, building upon more than 15 years of past collaboration. Blizzard and NetEase are working diligently on relaunch plans with further details to be shared at a later date. Separately, Microsoft Gaming and NetEase have also entered into an agreement to explore bringing new NetEase titles to Xbox consoles and other platforms. And that was the thing I was talking about earlier. And just to give you a little bit of an idea of what NetEase games are, um, let's see, I'm going to go to their website really quick. I don't believe it's anything that's like groundbreaking for, for me personally. But well, uh, the person I interviewed um, has the contract under Nettie's um, Jerry uh, uh, Jerry Hook. Hmm. Oh, is his is his new studio working with Nettie's? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Jar Spark is under Nettie's. Yeah. Nice. All right. Okay. So, oh well, that's actually more games than I thought. So uh, there's games: Knives Out, Life After, uh, Identity V, Identity Five. Excuse me. Blood Strike, Harry Potter, Magic Awakened, Dead by Daylight Mobile, Lord of the Rings Rise to War, Naraka Blade Point is the only one of the ones I've mentioned so far that I've actually played once or twice. Uh, Ace Racer, Infinite, Infinite Lagrange, I'm not entirely sure if I'm saying that correctly, Lost Light, Never After, Marvel Super War, Super Mecha Champions, Eve Echoes, I, I'm not even going to try to say that because I'm not going to butcher that shit. Um, Viking Guard and Badlanders. Uh, so not like the most exciting uh, group of games, but I mean, there, there's something there for, for people to play. And I know uh, people do quite enjoy Naraka Blade Born, or at least a good amount of my friend group does. Um, our Hawaiian friends love Naraka Blade Point. Uh, too big and too big blind and all those guys. But I mean, yes, this is, great, this is great news for Microsoft. Obviously, it's great for the Chinese players uh, getting access to the games that they love. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully uh, more games come to Xbox from this and hopefully more games go to China because of this. But that was, I mean, unless you have anything to add to that, that was the final topic that I had here. No, oh. I'm pretty good. Although I did want to talk about, um, and we talked about it in party chat a little bit, and I also talked about it with Mike and Twan on Monday, just to end the show, because um, it's it was hilarious on Monday, and it's still hilarious today to me, quite frankly. Um, the twenty most iconic video game characters of all time from BAFTA. I'm gonna bring it up here on the screen so you guys can see it. Uh, this list, I mean, you, you can see it yourselves. This list stinks. But just to go through it really quickly, okay? One, Laura Croft. Two, Mario. Three, Agent 47. Four, Sonic. Five, Sackboy. Six, Pac-Man. Fuck is Pac-Man number six? Number seven is Link. Eight's Master Chief. Nine, Kratos. Ten, Shadowheart. Insane. Eleven, Arthur Morgan. Twelve, Pikachu. 13, Minecraft Steve. 14, Solid Snake. 15, Crash Bandicoot. Not in the top 10, Crash, for whatever reason. 16, Cloud Strife. 17, Asterion. 
uh, 18 Kazuma Kiryu, 19 Ellie, and 20 Nathan Drake. Now, I'm going to ask you what you think about this, but I mean, th this list, just to give my quick thoughts, very brief thoughts, this list is bullshit. This list really, really stinks. I don't know. I don't know, like, what individuals were were gathered to curate this list, but they they shouldn't be making lists about gaming. Um, I'll say that much. But when you see this list, for what what are the imperfections you see in this list? What are the things you would change? Uh, spots you would move, people you would remove, people you would add. What do you, what do you think when you see this list? Well, I definitely get rid of the Baldur's Gate characters. I don't understand. Yes. Nobody knows those guys. I, I wouldn't know who Shadowheart and Asterion were if I hadn't played Baldur's Gate 3. Like, I know who... Like, even before I played Zelda, I knew who Link was. I knew Link was a character. But I don't... I don't know. Shadowheart and Asterion, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, there's that. I mean... There's so many people that you could, like, use to put in those places too like i felt like it was nuts that none of like any fighter characters were there um so i thought that was crazy uh they put pikachu there which i get it sure he's a video game character uh, i mean if 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 we're doing that then why not just throw like goku in there or something like that <laughs> you know like I, I i don't know i just feel like there are just a ton of characters that you could throw in like banjo or i don't know like was ratchet and clank not in there nope ratchet and clank's not in there hey, like like to me that's kind of nuts no jack and daxter at all um i guess it's been a while since um jack and daxter came out but yeah i just i don't understand it that i i think that list is just kind of Something else. I I think the perfect I yeah, the perfect way to sum this list up is they've got Agent 47. They think Agent 47 is a more recognizable character than both Sonic and Pac-Man. That's which is insane. That's crazy. That's not that's not real life. Uh but uh, yeah, I wanted to bring this up because I mean I, I thought it was silly. There's so much on this list that's wrong. Um, and I, and I also, I'm not somebody who knows much about Metal Gear Solid, so I didn't put it together myself, but also apparently they, they said Solid Snake at number 14. Apparently that's not Solid Snake. So they, they, they even got that wrong. Like the picture they use for Solid Snake, they got that wrong. Um, Stanley Francois says, yeah, they didn't put any fighting game characters. Scorpion. How is Scorpion not on this list? Like, I don't even like fighting games. But Scorpion's more recognizable to me than probably half of this list. Right. I, 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 I don't know. It's, yeah, it's silly. It's, it's a really silly list. And also, do they got Sackboy ahead of Master Chief? They don't, they don't have Ryu in there from Street Fighter. Or, no. or, um, or like any of the guys from in like law or hayachi or None it's just it. uh it's 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 a list it's a, a list it's, of game characters that's what it is to me it's definitely a, yeah it's not any definitive order of anything it's just these are some game characters that exist is what this list is that are yeah that that exists and are recognizable yeah sometimes some i mean some of them are yeah, uh, yeah the blunders gate <laughs> ones really kind of throw me off like like really it's, you couldn't pick any resident evil character or, or like the dead space guy or, or i don't know this just there's a lot like did, didn't you say aloy wasn't even on there aloy is not on there ellie's on there from last of us which is nuts because to me that should be joel to me like sure. if you ask if you ask people about Last of Us, like Ellie's obviously she's had more time in the games obviously because someone went golfing in the second game, but like she isn't more recognizable to me than Joel. 
Just because Joel, like Joel's, like he's he's the first he is the first game. Like Ellie's a big part of the first game, but like without Joel, the first game doesn't doesn't really exist. And also without Joel, the second game doesn't really exist. So, I mean, is what it is. What can you do? They made a bad list. You, I, I I mean, hey, brush yourself off. Move on to the next one, or don't stop making lists. Don't don't make another list. Uh, but that's that's all I've got for uh, this week's episode. We're gonna hop out of here, but uh, let's do the outros first. And yeah. let them know where they can find you, what you're up to. You're gonna be streaming a little bit later tonight. Let them know about that. Yeah, it's unfortunate if uh, you were at my show yesterday. Uh, like I said, or like Matt said earlier, Streamyard isn't working properly, and I'm not gonna sit around and wait for it to work properly. So I just decided that i'm gonna game on game on stream i'm gonna play some like classics um so like um i'm probably gonna hop on like nights into dreams on my saturn might play some some more of that dragon ball z game now that i figured out what i was doing wrong with that game for the longest time uh i was wondering why i couldn't like save or something like that because it's all in japanese so i didn't know Oh, no, damn. Couldn't, read it. couldn't read it i didn't know where to go but yeah I, I i believe i figured that out and how to continue and whatnot off of that game so uh i might hop on that might turn on the xbox and throw something classic on there i don't know uh, i I'll, all i know is i'm gonna be playing games and i'm gonna be talking about what's kind of been going down um as of lately talk about a few of the topics we probably touched upon here um what was one of the topics that i wanted to Oh yeah, I was probably gonna go a little deeper into um, into like maybe the Dead Space shelf thing, and mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know. Oh yeah, and and I wanted to talk about Vampire Survivor hitting um, PlayStation. So all right, but that's all I got. Ooh, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, and all like you want to you want to see all that link in the description to his channel. Uh, turn on the notifications so you know when he goes live. They're, they're, they're doing something almost every day on the channel, so it's worth checking out if you haven't already. Um, as for myself, here every Wednesday, obviously, uh, usually 2 p.m. Eastern, but we're, we're, we're looking at changing the time here uh, going forward. So, And that might be around 4 p.m. Eastern, uh, but, but yeah. we'll, we'll iron out for sure some details. But next week, look forward to it probably around 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Mondays and Fridays are videos over here on the channel. Uh, and on Monday nights, it's the L3R3 podcast with myself, Hard Days Mike, and it's me, Tuan. And then on Fridays, I'm over on Ham's channel for bull sitting with him, Cozy, Loke, and myself, and usually a guest as of late, Mental 9R, very cool dude. Uh, that's where you can find me. But we're going to hop up out of here. We will see you all next week. Thank you all very much for watching. Peace.